right so we have started with the next chapter on the fraud what is the name of the chapter the fraud and the auditor's responsibility in this regard right fraud and the auditor's responsibility in this regard and which is the auditing standard we study over there essay 240 what is the title of essay 240 the auditor's responsibilities relating to fraud in an audit of financial statements right so an exclusive standard only and only and only talking about the fraud right so what we can say we are discussing 315 330 450 for fraud in 240 okay right but first question what we had over there okay is detection of fraud and error the duty of the auditor right so did not answer the question directly but what we said that detection of fraud and error is the primary responsibility of the management auditors objective is to obtain a reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement then because of the inherent limitations of an audit there is an unavoidable risk that some material misstatements may not be detected even though if the audit has been planned and performed in accordance with the standards on auditing then what do we say fraud is more difficult to detect than an error right management fraud is more difficult to detect than an employee fraud what auditor needs to do he needs to exercise the adequate reasonable care and skill and the auditor he shall remain alert that is maintain an attitude of professional skepticism okay why is it so that fraud is more difficult to detect than an error why is it so that fraud is more difficult to detect than an error because fraud may involve sophisticated and uh, carefully organized schemes designed to conceal it such as forgery then deliberate failure to record the transactions or the intentional misrepresentations being made to the auditor and it will be even more difficult to detect if it is accompanied by the collusion right it will be even more difficult to detect if it is accompanied by the collusion right so what do we say fraud is more difficult to detect than an error why it is more difficult to detect because it may involve the sophisticated and the carefully organized schemes designed to conceal it what are the schemes forgery or there could be the deliberate failure to record the transactions or there could be the intentional misrepresentations being made to the auditor it could be the intentional misrepresentations being made to the auditor and then also what we said it will be more difficult to detect if it is accompanied by the collusion right it will be more difficult to detect if it is accompanied by the collusion right so fraud is more difficult to detect than an error right where had we also seen this case fraud is more difficult to detect than an error where had we also seen this case yes fraud is more difficult to detect than an error we had seen a sentence you know that the audit procedures that are effective in detecting an error may not be effective in detecting a fraud you know audit procedures which are effective in detecting an error may not be effective in detecting a fraud right so where had we discussed this we had discussed this in the inherent limitations of an audit right we had discussed it in the same to same sentence okay right have we already seen these words have we studied the inherent limitations of an audit and then not you remember inherent limitations of an audit and then not nature of the financial reporting nature of the audit procedures the other matters and the timeliness and here also in the nature of our audit procedures what we had written mini version of the sentence which we are studying right now in as in the inherent limitations of audit what we have written that the fraud may involve the sophisticated and carefully organized schemes designed to conceal it and as an auditor you are not an expert in the authentication of the documents right it, it could also involve the collusion right so are you getting the similar sentence are we seeing it in the where am i right now in chapter number 1 1.4 
the inherent limitations of an audit what is the second inherent limitation okay the nature of audit procedures what does it say one management may provide the incomplete information second fraud involves the sophisticated and the carefully organized schemes designed to conceal it are you understanding that right where we had seen this in the inherent limitations of an audit and now where we are seeing it in the responsibilities of the auditor in relation to the fraud right now where we are seeing it we are seeing it in the responsibilities of the auditor in relation to the fraud right the responsibilities of the auditor in relation to the fraud okay right then after after that what do we also say over there right management fraud is more difficult to detect than the employee fraud right so first for fraud is more difficult to detect than an error then fraud involves sophisticated and carefully organized schemes right then what does it say it also depends upon the skillfulness of the perpetrator the frequency and the extent of the manipulation the degree of the collusion involved the size of the individual amounts and also the seniority of the ind those individuals involved okay right then well the audit it is it possible like see there are five good words sentences over here now okay, the ability of the auditor depends or, or to detect the fraud depends upon the one skillfulness of the perpetrator okay how carefully how cunningly the fraud has been done second it depends upon the frequency and extent of the manipulation then it depends upon the degree of the collusion involved then the relative size of the individual amounts manipulated and it also depends upon the seniority of those individuals involved is it possible that this itself might come as a three mark question in the exam and that which are the factors which affect the auditor's ability to detect a fraud so these are the five points which you need to write in your answer right in that case these are the five points which you need to write in your answer what is auditor's ability to detect the fraud right these are the points regarding the auditor's ability to detect the fraud like so if you see in ca final also what i had told you there is a chapter called as the automated environment just as an in intermediate you have the chapter on the automated environment similarly in the ca final also you have the chapter on the automated environment right in that automated environment no they talk about the risk management do you all understand risk management right in that automated environment over there what do they talk about is the risk management and in the risk management what do they say right in the risk management over there what do they say that there has to be the enterprise risk management right so if this file whenever is right so there is a question over there regarding the enterprise risk management right so enterprise maybe let me try to open it in the normal pdf maybe that way it will open quickly okay right so after the pr review chapter just a variety of a question which i want to show you of the i c a i okay ha huh. so see this enterprise risk management in that enterprise risk management they have given the examples of the risk okay what all could be the different types of risks for an organization so all one all one one two two words over there market risk operational risk credit risk environmental risk regulatory compliance technology security financial reporting business partner and the product or project risk right what are these these are the examples of the risk so what does it say an enterprise organization needs to have the enterprise risk management and then they talk about over there okay what are the examples of the risk and then then if you look at the question bank right if you look at the question bank what does it say the volatility even actually the answer is smaller than the question the volatility the unpredictability and the pace of fast changes that exist in the automated environment today is far greater than in the past and consequently it throws the more risk to the business which acquires them requires them to have to need continuously to manage such risk state various risk which an enterprise may have to face, uh, face and manage right so the examples of risk under the enterprise risk management over yes overview which has been asked for the five marks in the exams right so rather the size of the answer is smaller than the size of the question
you understand that so similarly that is why when i look at this point over here is do i think of it that there is a possibility that this could be coming as a separate question in the exam okay there what are the factors affecting the auditor's ability to detect the fraud okay right then what do we say that management fraud is more difficult to detect than the employee fraud what is, why is that so why is management fraud more difficult to detect than the employee fraud because employee work is at least being supervised by the management it is being reviewed by the management but management is anybody there over there to supervise or review their work no so what does it say management fraud is more greater is more difficult to detect than the employee fraud because management is in a position to manipulate the accounting records present the fraudulent information override the controls you know overriding control what is it called as management override of the controls right designed to prevent similar frauds by the other employees so employees cannot do the fraud but the fraud can be committed by the management okay right then what about the liability of the auditor when will the auditor not be liable right when will the auditor not be liable when he can prove that he has done his work with reasonable care and skill right so the liability of the auditor for failure to detect a fraud exists only when such failure is clearly due to the not exercising the reasonable care and skill right so what auditor needs to prove that he has done his work with reasonable care and skill and if auditor is able to prove what that i have done my work with by following the adequate procedures for the conduct of the audit then he cannot be held responsible for the same right so what auditor needs to prove is the reasonable care and the skill and then what does it say auditor when you are obtaining the reasonable assurance what you should do you should maintain an attitude of the professional skepticism throughout the audit so is yes, considering the potential for the moc and recognizing the fact that audit procedures that are effective in detecting an error may not be effective in detecting a fraud why because error is unintentional whereas fraud is intentional right is it clear to all of you detection of fraud and error is it the duty of the auditor right is it the duty of the auditor what do we say it is the primary responsibility of the management then what is auditor's objective to obtain the reasonable assurance then what do we say there is an unavoidable risk then after that what do we say fraud is more difficult to detect then we say management fraud is more difficult to detect what auditor needs to show that he exercise the reasonable care and skill and then he also needs to maintain an attitude of the professional skepticism okay right so what questions are there in the question bank one the primary responsibility for prevent detection of the fraud and error rests with the tcwg and the management of the entity right so it is the responsibility of the management to ensure a culture of honesty and ethical behavior in the organization right the culture of the nst and honesty and the ethical behavior right so this is the first one i told you know it's like a retail question the primary responsibility of the management right they should put a strong emphasis on the fraud prevention and the fraud deterrence okay right then after that what does it say if there remains a deep laid fraud in the accounts which in the normal course of examination of the accounts may not have come to light it will light it will not be considered as a failure of the audit right will it not be considered as a failure of the audit yes why because detection of fraud and error what do we say as such it is the primary responsibility of the management okay so long time back in 1800 times okay in one is so long time back right what happened the company is yes, there was a cotton mills company and this cotton mills company prepared their financial statements and auditor expressed opinion and then later on a fraud was detected and then they said ke oh auditor you did not do your audit properly that is why the matter went in the courts of law and there the court right there later on fraud was detected company sued the auditor that auditors have not done their audit properly and then later on the court gave a verdict saying what the judgment was in the favor of the auditor very famous case what is it the kingston cotton mills case and what did the judgment of the court say that as an auditor you are a watchdog but you are not a bloodhound 
right as an auditor an auditor is a watch dog but he is not a bloodhound right he just has to observe whether accounting everything whether it is happening properly he doesn't have to pounce on every transaction and entry and asset and liability on the company are you understanding that what did the verdict of the audit uh, court say that the auditor is a watch dog but he is not a bloodhound right so simple language what does it mean okay as an auditor you are supposed to be cautious you are not supposed to be suspicious right and today what does it say what is the role of the auditor if i today there is no court verdict which has come but i am telling you that in today's time if you talk about the role of the auditor is yes, cautious means professional skepticism today the role of the auditor is more like an independent umpire you understand the auditor is not taking the side of any of the client or any of what the management is saying you understand no the face of the umpire so expressionless you understand no that what he said that bowler will come running in front of him and shout like this ke out that and then he will be no reaction at all you understand no absolutely no reaction at all you understand right so what is that auditor like that company whatever you say there is no fraud there is a fraud and sometimes they you know even go for a drs decision review system wherein they contest the claim of the umpire but what does umpire has taken a stand you understand that no right so that is like the role of the auditor okay right so here what does it say if there remains a deep laid fraud in the accounts which in the normal course of the examination may not be coming to light it will not be construed as a failure of the audit provided that the auditor was not negligent in carrying out his work that means how should the auditor do his work that means how should the auditor do his work with reasonable care and the skill at right? professional competence and due care this principle was established as early in 1896 in the Kingston Cotton Mills case, right? In the Kingston Cotton Mills Company case, okay. Then what does it say? Even in the London and General Bank insurance, what does it say? Auditor must ascertain that the books of account of the company show the true financial position. Then what does it say? It is no part of the auditor's duty. Yes. Can anybody give me a good word for this one? right for the first time the duties of the company auditor was spelled out in specific terms and lord justice lindy right or what did it say lindy observe what that it is no part of an auditor's duty to give advice either to the directors or to the shareholders as to what they are supposed to do an auditor has nothing to do with the prudence or the imprudence about making loans without security it is nothing to him whether the business is being conducted prudently or imprudently profitably or unprofitably it is nothing to him whether dividends are properly or improperly declared provided he discharges his own duty to the shareholders yes as an auditor you are not concerned with the propriety of business conduct you are not concerned with the decision making of the management right what they did with their 200 crore doesn't matter to you should you have said you should have used the money like this or like that no wherever however they have they have used the money you just need to show whether it is correctly reflected in the books of account his business is to ascertain and state the true financial position of the company at the time of audit and his duty is confined to that okay right then next one if the books of account of a company are not properly maintained and if the internal control is weak the possibility of frauds and errors are enormous and the auditor even with the best of his efforts he may not be able to detect all of them discuss the test that the judiciary may apply to assess the auditor's performance so whether to catch the caller of the auditor or no it depends upon the proof it depends upon the various evidence that whether you are able to prove that you did your work with the reasonable care and the skill then what does it say whether the errors and frauds could have been detected in the ordinary course of checking without any special efforts then whether auditor had any reason to suspect the existence of the error or the fraud and the error or fraud was so deep laid that the same may not have been detected by the application of the normal audit procedure like you know in 
CA final, there is a case study over there. That what happened, the auditor did the audit, he expressed an opinion on the true and fair view, say for the year ended 31st March 2026. However, during the year, that is between 25-26, the cashier of the company had committed a Yes, the cashier of the company has absconded during this period. Absconded, that means he ran away. Right, he ran away. And now what did our auditor do? He did not check the cash book. Our auditor finished doing the full audit of 2026 and he did not check the cash book. And the auditor should have at least asked, na, ki why did the cashier run away? Huh, cashier left his job understood but what you came to know that the cashier has run away now should the auditor would have found out that there are some circumstances for reason to suspect the existence of a fraud now was there a reason for the auditor okay i understand you don't need to perform any additional audit procedure you know no special efforts over there but any normal auditor one of the basic document which you check in the audit is the cash book and this auditor so negligent he is not even looking into whether the cash book has been verified he is not even inquiring into okay, why did the cashier of the company ran away so in this case can the auditor exercise reasonable care and skill no right the auditor cannot exercise the uh, what you say prove the reasonable care and the skill okay then a question asked three times in your exams what is it is detection of fraud and error the duty of the auditor and then the auditor's responsibility for detection of fraud and error with specific to the standards on auditing so that is the paragraph which we just discussed and second one is as per the companies act 2013 because they are saying the companies act 2013 you also need to write down reporting to the central government what is that that is 143 12 the duty to report the fraud to CG then is fraud more difficult to detect than error yes so you have to write down a three or a four mark answer for that one then management is often in a position to perpetrate the fraud as an auditor you are suspecting Okay, at this question, I'll come to it later. It is coming from SA 240. When we come to 240 specifically, I'll come to this question because all these are the questions from 240. Okay, right. And now let's do one last question from the, the 25th question over here. Right, so now what happened? You were doing the audit of Growth Limited. Right, say today is 20th of April 2026. Right, 20th of April. 2026 what is the date of the board meeting 25th of april 2026 and now what has happened today also like you started your audit from 2nd april and you are doing the audit and now what happened today on 20th of april the auditor has encountered a fraud or he has encountered a suspected fraud Right, if as a result of fraud or suspected fraud, right, what, sh 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 what the auditor has found out that there are the exceptional circumstances, right, there are the exceptional circumstances, like you know, all of you, do you know the vegetable cauliflower? Gobi, full gobi, okay, right, you know the cauliflower, okay, so now imagine, right, today cauliflower is to be cooked for food. Okay, so now cutting the cauliflower, the small, small florets of the cauliflower and the bottom also making it into small, small pieces. Obviously, now this entire flower, cauliflower, right, I am going to cut it into small, small pieces and then after that put the oil, seasoning, tomatoes and then put the, make the vegetable and then have it for lunch. This is what was planned. With that intention, I am cutting the cauliflower can you visualize cutting of the cauliflower everyone okay now what happened when i am cutting the cauliflower big flower ray when i am cutting the cauliflower a big now you have to assume this is a earthworm a big earthworm doesn't look like earthworm whatever ha huh, mini version of snake only whatever right so now an earthworm of this size comes out of the cauliflower now what to do now see small little bit here and there it is black you can just you know cut that much part and use it but now this is hazardous so now what to do pick up the 
cauliflower and put it in the dustbin. Now, had I started cutting the cauliflower with the plan of putting it in the dustbin? No, my plan was to cook and eat. But what happened? Earthworm came. So now, similarly, what was my plan in the audit? To issue audit report. But who came? Earthworm. Who came? Earthworm. Now what to do? Throw the audit. Throw the audit. If as a result of fraud or suspected fraud, the auditor encounters exceptional circumstances that bring into question the auditor's ability to continue performing the audit. So the moment I look at the earthworm, I have a question whether I should keep the, uh, you know, cut that much part and whether I should still cook the vegetable or what to do. That brings into question the auditor's ability to continue performing the audit. What to do? First thing, anything in life happens, any exceptional circumstances, what is the first thing that you need to do? You need to take a deep breath because you need to check are you alive? Because if you're alive, then you can deal with everything in life. You understand? No, life is non-negotiable. After breathing is done, after you've checked, you are breathing. Now what to do? Determine. Now, duty comes first. Determine what? The professional, legal responsibilities as appropriate in the circumstances of the engagement. Nowadays, aunties, what they will do? They want to make reels. So now auntie found earthworm. So then she made a reel and then put it on the social media post that you know you need to be so careful. Right, so determine the professional legal responsibilities. And second, what auntie can do? Say the vegetable vendor is next to her house only. Immediately, with the cauliflower, go. Okay, right. So, consider. Ayo, consider whether it is appropriate to withdraw from the engagement. You'll say, I will never buy vegetables from you. You understand? Right. So, what you need to do if as a result of fraud or suspected fraud, the auditor encounters exceptional circumstances that bring into Question, not cauliflower, question. Okay, the auditor's ability to continue performing the audit after deep breathing is over. What to do? Determine the professional legal responsibilities as applicable in these circumstances and second, consider whether it is appropriate to withdraw from the engagement and if auditor decides to withdraw, can you just get up, pick your bag and go as an auditor, pick up your laptop and run away? No. If the auditor decides to withdraw from the engagement, one, what he needs to do? He needs to communicate the reasons of withdrawal to the management TCWG. And second, what he needs to do, he needs to consider his professional legal responsibilities with respect to such withdrawal. Yes, what are the professional legal responsibilities with respect to withdrawal? Within, within 30 days from the 
date of the resignation the auditor needs to file the ADT 3 with the company and the ROC and in case of a government company also with the C and AG right so one you have to consider your professional legal responsibility like here if the fraud is of 1 crore or above then what you will have to do 143 12 duty to report the fraud to the CG immediately but not later than two days Right? The auditor needs to report the fraud to the audit committee board of directors and seek their reply or observation within the 45 days. And second, what the auditor needs to do, he needs to consider whether he needs to withdraw from the engagement. And if he decides to withdraw, then reasons for withdrawal, he needs to communicate it to the management TCWG. And second, he needs to consider his professional legal responsibilities with respect to the withdrawal. Right. So that is if the auditor identifies a fraud or a suspected fraud that brings into yes that that brings into question the auditor's ability right to continue performing the audit. What are the two things the auditor needs to do? Determine the professional legal responsibilities and second what consider whether it is appropriate to withdraw. And if you decide to withdraw, then reasons for withdrawal you communicate to management TCWG and second you consider your professional legal responsibilities okay right so auditor unable to continue the engagement yes auditor is unable to continue the engagement not possible to continue performing the audit his ability to continue performing the audit so what is the key word over there continue it brings into question what the auditor's ability to continue performing the audit. What the auditor needs to do in that case? Right, auditor, yes, ability brings into question the auditor's ability to continue performing the audit. One, yes, what does it say? Fraud or suspected fraud. The auditor encounters the exceptional circumstances that bring into question the auditor's ability. One, determine the professional legal responsibility second consider whether it is appropriate to withdraw and if he withdraws he needs to communicate the reasons for withdrawal to management tcwg and second whether there is any professional or legal requirement right is it clear to all of you and then also to whom do we do the fraud reporting to to also whom do we do the fraud reporting to? To the central government 143.12 and we report under the CARO to the shareholders 143.11. Right, 143.11. What is 143.11? It is the additional matters of reporting which have been specified by the central government. Right, so 140, that is CARO. Right, so 143.11 and then you also have the 143.12. Okay, right, have you noted this down? Right, so copy down, right, what does it say over here, right, auditor unable to continue the engagement, right, unable to continue the engagement, why the auditor is unable to continue the engagement, why the auditor is unable to continue the engagement due to fraud or suspected fraud, okay. unable to continue the engagement this why due to fraud or suspected fraud yes it is due to the exceptional circumstances that bring into question the auditor's ability to continue performing the audit then what you need to do determine the professional legal responsibilities second yes so you have to remember two words what are the two words determine and consider determine the professional legal responsibilities and second consider whether it is appropriate to withdraw and if you decide to withdraw reasons to be communicated to management tcwg and second your professional legal requirement with respect to the withdrawal will okay right so what have we discussed in the chapter of fraud so far right one what we have discussed is the 
detection of fraud and error is it the duty of the auditor then after that what did we discuss auditor unable to continue the engagement right if any fraud or suspected fraud auditor is unable to continue the engagement okay right now let's come to the definition of fraud right now let's talk about the definition of the fraud right what is a fraud it is an intentional act 100% one thing there has to be an intention right intentional act who could have the intention the management the tcwg the employee or the third party can a supplier also do a fraud on the company yes and why these people have the intention right fraud is an intentional act by management tcwg employees or the third parties why they are doing this intentional act right intentional act by one or more individuals among management tcwg employees and the or the third parties how do they do the fraud involving the use of deception what is deception cheating and why cheating to obtain an unjust or an illegal advantage right to obtain an unjust or an illegal advantage right so what is fraud it is an intentional act by whom management tcwg employees or the third parties what does it involve it involves the use of the deception and why deception why cheating to obtain an unjust or to obtain an illegal advantage right to obtain an unjust or to obtain an illegal advantage are you getting that what is that that's the definition of the fraud what is the definition fraud is an intentional act by whom management tcwg employees or the third parties what do they do they do the cheating why they do the cheating to get an unjust or an illegal advantage right to obtain an unjust or to obtain an illegal advantage okay right so let us look at a few correct and correct over here right fraud means misappropriation of goods or cash and artificial manipulation of the accounts no that's not the definition of the fraud what is the definition of fraud it is an intentional act by one or more individuals among the management tcwg employees or the third parties involving the use of the deception why to obtain an unjust or an illegal advantage okay next one fraud is an intentional act by one or more individuals among management tcwg employees or the third parties involving the use of the deception to obtain an unjust or an illegal advantage is it right yes 100% right right that's the definition of the fraud okay right as per sa 240 misstatement in the financial statements can arise from fraud only no misstatement can arise from fraud or it can arise from the error okay misstatements can arise from fraud only no they can also arise from the error okay right fraudulent financial reporting we are yet to study right misappropriation of assets also yet to do right misappropriation of the assets right so probably we start here rather i want to show you those questions which are regarding fraud is more difficult to detect than error right the primary responsibility for prevention detection of the fraud rests with both the tcwg and the management right it is the primary responsibility of the management and the tcwg to put a strong emphasis on fraud prevention and the fraud deterrence okay right the primary responsibility for the prevention detection of fraud rests with the statutory auditor of the company no it rests with the management tcwg right not with the statutory auditor what is the primary responsibility of the statutory auditor to obtain the reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material real misstatement the primary objective of an audit is to detect fraud and error no what is the primary objective of the audit to obtain the reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement okay basically an auditor reports on the truth or otherwise of the financial statements prevention and detection of fraud and error are secondary to this right so one what is the main bread and butter of the auditor 
true and fair view then it says number 2 detection of error and number 3 detection of fraud why because error is unintentional and fraud is intentional so first duty true and fair second duty to detect fraud error and third duty is to detect the fraud okay fraud is more difficult to detect than error yes is fraud more difficult to detect than error write down yes fraud is more difficult to detect than error correct write down what you'll write down correct fraud is more difficult to detect than error i don't disagree with the statement because fraud involves sophisticated and carefully organized schemes designed to conceal it such as forgery then deliberate failure to record the transactions intentional misrepresentations being made to the auditor and it is even more difficult to detect if accompanied by collusion okay right write down fraud is more difficult to detect than error fraud is more difficult to detect than error why because fraud involves sophisticated and uh, write down sophisticated write down sophisticated and carefully organized schemes designed to conceal it such as forgery then deliberate failure to record the transactions and the intentional misrepresentations being made to the auditor right and the intentional misrepresentations being made to the auditor and fraud is even more difficult to detect when accompanied by collusion right fraud is even more difficult to detect than when accompanied by collusion right fraud involves fraud is more difficult to detect than error because fraud involves sophisticated and carefully organized schemes designed to conceal it such as forgery then deliberate failure to record the transactions then the intentional misrepresentations being made to the auditor and fraud is even more difficult to detect when accompanied by collusion among the employees right even more difficult to detect when accompanied by the collusion among the employees right fraud is more difficult to detect than an error right how many lines four lines seven lines five lines six lines sometimes the mind says for two marks ma'am i have to write so much okay right so fraud is more difficult to detect correct okay right then the risk of not detecting a material misstatement resulting from fraud is higher than the risk of not detecting one resulting from error पहले सिंपल लैंग्वेज में फ्रॉड इज मोर डिफिकल्ट टू डिटेक्ट देन एरर नाउ रिस्क ऑफ नॉट डिटेक्टिंग अ मटीरियल मिस स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम फ्रॉड इज हायर देन द रिस्क ऑफ नॉट डिटेक्टिंग वन फ्रॉम एरर करेक्ट वाई बिकॉज फ्रॉड इन्वॉल्व सेम ड्रामा सफिस्टिकेटेड एंड केयरफुली ऑर्गेनाइज स्कीम्स ओके द रिस्क ऑफ नॉट डिटेक्टिंग एन एरर इज मोर देन द रिस्क ऑफ नॉट डिटेक्टिंग फ्रॉड नो इट इज द अदर वे राउंड राइट वाई बिकॉज फ्रॉड इन्वॉल्व सफिस्टिकेटेड ओके right in comparing management fraud with employee fraud the auditor's risk of failing to discover the fraud is less for management fraud no the risk is high for management fraud why because management has the ability to 
override the existing internal controls okay right then after that these questions we are yet to study okay right so what are we discussing over here this chapter on the fraud okay and now had i discussed with you sa315 yes 315 had i discussed with you the risk assessment procedures of sa315 right risk assessment procedures right what were the risk assessment procedures i a o r i inquiries of the management and the yes inquiries of the management and the others within the entity then the analytical procedures then the yes then you have the observation and the inspection right the observation and the ins inspection and last but not the least is the related activities right it is not reperformance it is the related activities okay right so what did we say our auditor is he ever sitting at one place no he is roaming around you know he went to meet the ceo and then the pun came to serve the tea you remember that example right so inquiries of the management and the others right who others had we talked about over there please go to 315 and find out the list of the others over there go to sa315 where you will find 315 in the chapter number 4 in the risk assessment go over there and tell me all the people who come in the others chapter number chapter number 4 risk assessment ha huh. who he will make inquiry apart from the management of he will make inquiries of the tcwg then he will make inquiries of the high level employees then he will make inquiries of the marketing sales personnel then he will make inquiry of the sales personnel then the in house legal counsel then he will also make inquiries of the risk management committee right the risk management function then he will also make inquiries of the internal auditors is it right these are of all who he is doing the inquiry of he is going and meeting all of them why he is going and meeting all of them i did you find out what is the page number should be one only 4.1 right inquiries of management and others within the entity who all is coming in the others over there are you understanding that okay now listen to me what are these these are the risk assessment procedures of sa 315 now do i perform risk assessment procedures in sa 240 also do i need to perform risk assessment procedures in sa 240 also yes what did i tell you 315 330 450 4 for fraud in 240 that means i am going to talk about the risk assessment procedures i am going to talk about the responses and that also talks about the evaluation of the misstatements are you understanding that right because is it covered in 315330 yes but specifically we also cover it under the 240 are you understanding that okay right so now what we are talking about is the risk assessment procedures of sa240 now what we are talking about is the wrap only but now the wrap is of yes 240 now the wrap is of 240 and now what is the wrap of 240 i i a f r f i i a f r f right f r f is not financial reporting framework keep quiet right what are we talking about over here i is the inquiries of the management and the others within the entity then we have your separate point for the inquiries of the tcwg then we have the analytical procedures and then we have the evaluation of the frf what is frf over here it is a fraud risk factor it is a fraud risk factor how do i read it fraud risk factor left to right fraud risk factor how do i read it right to left don't say factor risk fraud factors due to which there is a 
risk of fraud right factors due to which there is a risk of fraud give me an answer if there is a fraud risk factor means there is a fraud if there is a fraud risk factor that means there is a fraud no it only increases the possibility of occurrence of the fraud there is only high chances of the fraud if there is a fraud risk factor that itself does not mean that there is a fraud it's only now that there are higher chances of the fraud in the organization are you understanding that okay right so what one term we are studying over here fraud risk factors what are fraud risk factors it is the event it is the condition or it is the situation and what is the event or what is the condition or what is the situation that there is an incentive or there is a pressure or there is an opportunity there is an incentive there is a pressure or there is an opportunity to commit a fraud right there is either an there is either an incentive or there is a pressure or there is an opportunity to commit a fraud any event condition or situation which either gives you an incentive or it puts a pressure on you or it provides you with an opportunity to commit a fraud very fundamental example what would give you an incentive to commit a fraud money right what does it say okay managerial remuneration is linked to profits okay whatever are the profits of the company 11% of that is your remuneration obviously you have an incentive to commit a fraud you know the higher the profits of the company the higher the managerial remuneration you will get so you have an incentive second pressure right second one the pressure what is the pressure you want to declare a good result why so that your share prices increase right actual profit of the company right 61 crore you want to show 649 crore satyam no their actual operating margin was 61 crore what 3% of revenue what they showed 84% 24% of the revenue 649 crore so what they had they had a pressure to commit a fraud even that vijji siddharth over there what did he say i had a lot of pressure from the income tax department right the dg commissioner over there right so there is a pressure to commit a fraud and third one right third one right what is over there there is an opportunity to commit a fraud right so there is an uncle uncle is working in cadbury warehouse uncle is working in cadbury warehouse can you imagine inventory of cadbury as inventory of cadbury over there cadbury warehouse chocolates with chocolates dairy milk silk bubbly red velvet and oreo and so many of those varieties and bonville and five star and so many or big big boxes kept over there uncle has seven children every morning when uncle leaves for office each of the child comes to the father and says father today evening get for me bubbly get for me oreo get for me red velvet what uncle does writes on a piece of paper which child has demanded with chocolate then wife has prepared tiffin tiffin uncle takes to office lunch time uncle eats the tiffin then after that uncle cleans the tiffin in the office only then puts it for drying then after the tiffin dry, uh, dries over there what he does he goes to the warehouse he picks up all the check chocolates then stuffs them in his tiffin and then evening while going home he is taking it along with him are you understanding children happy now company inventory will it look less yes. company inventory will it look less so inventory manager will be responsible where did the chocolates of the company go so uncle what he did past accounting entry what eaten by rats account debit <laughs> who are the rats 
okay right so what is that now uncle is able to take so many chocolates every day that means there is no monitoring of the control what do you say monitoring of the inventory second problem that the accounting and the custodial functions have not been segregated if uncle is having access to inventory can have uncle have the access to the inventory register no so what means the what does that mean there is a deficiency in the internal control and from a deficiency in internal control arises an opportunity right from a weakness from a deficiency in the internal control what arises is an opportunity are you understanding that right so auditor in your risk assessment procedures what you need to evaluate whether one or more fraud risk factors are present what is a fraud risk factor any event any condition any situation which either puts a gives you an incentive or puts a pressure or provides you with an opportunity to commit a fraud frf is equal to ipo incentive pressure opportunity to commit a fraud are you getting that everyone okay so what are the risk assessment procedures of sa 240 you make the inquiries of the management you make inquiries of the TCWG, you perform the analytical procedures and you also do the evaluation of the fraud risk factors. Okay, primary responsibility for the prevention detection of the fraud and error, whose? Primary responsibility of the management. So what I am going to do, I am going to ask the management. That management, have you identified the risk in relation to fraud? Then management, how you have responded to the risk in relation to fraud? Management, have you communicated any fraud which happened during the year to TCWG? Management, what action have you taken against the employees of the company who have done a fraud? So these inquiries I am doing of the management because see as an auditor i am assessing fraud risk is it right everyone what word i use right now see generally we do risk assessment procedures sa315 we identify and assess the rmm hai na now in sa240 also what i am doing i am assessing the rmm risk of material misstatement but it is what a it is due to fraud that is why what we say you have to consider it to be an sr significant risk and second because it is due to fraud you may also call it as a fraud risk fraud risk so rmm which we assess in sa240 are called as the fraud risk rmm which we assess in sa2 40 are called as the fraud risk are you able to follow everyone okay right then after that what i do i also make inquiries of the tcwg now see if employee has done a fraud if the employee of the company has done a fraud that will management go and tell tcwg if management comes to know that employee has done a fraud that fraud which has been done by employee will management go and tell to tcwg yeah if employee has done a fraud will management go and inform tcwg yes but say management themselves have done a fraud now will they go and tell tcwg that i have done this fraud no so now what does it say you make direct inquiries of the tcwg what whether they have knowledge of any fraud in the company during the year and also how they are supervising the management also how they are supervising the management of the company right so one risk assessment procedure inquiry of the management and the others second you do the inquiries of the tcwg whether they have knowledge of any fraud and how they are supervising the management process second analytical procedures again last year traveling expenses 70 lakh this year 7 crore is there a possibility of fraud in the traveling expenses right so you come to know any unusual transaction or event 
right any unusual transaction or event by performing the analytical procedures are you able to follow this everyone right so what are we talking about over here is the auditors responsibilities relating to fraud right what are the risk assessment procedures i told you i i a FRF evaluation of fraud risk factors right so what you do inquiries of the management what inquiries you do of the management whether this yes, how they are assessing the risk of fraud how they are responding to the risk communication with TCWG communication with the employees and also you can have a discussion with the internal auditor then TCWG how they are supervising the management whether they have knowledge of any fraud and unusual unexpected relationships is nothing but your analytical procedures and then you evaluate whether one or more FRF what is FRF fraud risk factors are they present right one or more fraud risk factors are they present is it clear to all of you right so now in SA 315 in SA 315 do you do we do inquiries of management and others within the entity 315 inquiries of management and others what we had written in the list of others all these people who are the all the people TCWG employees marketing sales in-house legal counsel risk management and the internal auditor now in 240 also do you make the inquiries of others in 240 also what is written over there inquiries of management and the others within the entity right the inquiries of the management and the others within the entity right so who comes in the others in the entity over here again it says the operating personnel the employees with different levels of authorities the employees involved in recording the complex unusual transaction the in-house legal counsel then the chief ethics officer or the equivalent person and the person or the persons who have been charged with the allegations of the fraud right so similar to the others which we had in SA 315 right so one of the offbeat questions seen in your exams from the pronouncements right this is when you go into the details of the standard what did I show you today SA 240 is running into 48 pages right it is running into the 48 pages if you look into the entire content of the standard see how does a standard look like first you have the Yes, what you say the index of the standard right you have the index of the standard then after that you have the main text right so now in front of these main text what they have written over there a7 to a8 then they have written what over there a9 right then the a10 a11 right so a12 13 a14 are you seeing that what is that a it is the application and the other explanatory material like so over here the auditor shall make inquiries of the management regarding the following and then what does it say the auditor will also make inquiries of the others within the entity right so what does it say a 15 to 17 right the a 15 to 17 so this is the main text of the standard this is the main text of the auditing standard what representation communication with TCWG documentation and then starts the A part what is the A part the application and the other explanatory material so all the A1 A2 references which they had given upstairs now they are explaining each one of them right now they are explaining each one of them right a consideration risk assessment procedures inquiries of management and others and now this A16 what is the A16 inquiries of others within the entity from whom the auditor may direct inquiries about the existence or the suspicion of the fraud what does it say operating personnel right why have I written over there right then the employees with the different levels of the authority then the employees involved in recording the complex unusual transaction then the in-house legal counsel then the chief ethics officer or the equivalent person and dealing with the allegations of the fraud are you understanding that right then what inquiries you make of the internal audit right so now yes one I taught you about that whenever you study any chapter you have to look into the input output ratio 
right? Okay, how many questions you are studying and what is the probability of they coming in the exam? Now you have 27 standards applicable, right? Say on an average each standard could be 20 to 25 pages like this, right? So you read the content over there and you deliberate on it and only reading understanding will not help. What they want is word by word. You understand? No. If as the question has come in May 23, what is their expectation that you have to write it word by word? It's a three mark question. So even though if you write two, three correctly on your own, you get one mark or something over there. Okay. So there are like there might be maximum one, two or three, nothing beyond three. That I can tell you 100%. This yes, three is also I'm telling very much on the higher side. Okay, generally one or two questions which are like very offbeat over there. But then, you know, you just can't say, okay, oh, the question came from the pronouncements of the ICAI and then I had not studied and all of that. No, there were hundreds of other things which you had studied and those have come in the exams. Right? Those you should also be able to write over there. You understand? So pronouncements of ICI, what we do to the extent of whatever questions have been asked or whatever have been prepared in the main text of the standard. Right? That is what we cover mainly. You understand? Even if you read this, now reading and understanding would also have been fine for us. But what they want is the memorization. Now that is impossible. Just for one or two answers, you go to 1450, what do you say? So many questions and answers over there. No, there is no proper cost benefit analysis over there. Yeah, but when is the stupidity? When is the height of stupidity or the irrationality over there? Okay, okay. May 13, 23, the question came. The students who went into the exam hall say if they had not studied the pronouncements, they would not have known about it. But now, May 26, again the question came in the exam. And now when you are not able to write the answer, then that is foolishness. You understand? No, May 23 students have already sacrificed their three marks when that question was asked in their attempt over there. But now if it comes again and when then you are not able to write an answer, then that is stupidity. Are you understanding that? And I'm putting the plain facts in front of you. There's nothing for me to hide it from you. Like there's no reason also. Right, so that is one question. Now I have been discussing the subject for last eight days with you. Did we ever find anything like that? No, everything we see is in the study material and all of that. Okay, right. So anyways, what are we talking about over here is the risk assessment procedures. Then what happens by assessing, the, performing the risk assessment procedures? You identify the RMM, but this RMM is due to fraud. Right, so then what does it say? Yes, it is, can be called as the fraud risk. Today we had discussed, today only, we had discussed control activities. Control activities? Where? Chrism. Second C in the chrism. In that C, one we had said is significant risk which is often there due to yellow color and blue color. What was that? Non-routine transactions or the judgmental matters. And after that we had said, okay, following is always a significant risk. One, when the risk is a risk of fraud. And second, RPT due to ONCB, related party transactions which are outside the normal course of the business. So here, what does it say? The auditor shall, based on the presumption that there are risks of fraud in the revenue recognition, evaluate which type of revenue and revenue transactions or assertions give rise to such risk. Right, so is, this a, is it a presumed fraud risk in every audit revenue recognition? Yes. Right, presumed fraud risk, right? What does it say? Presumption that this is always to be considered as a fraud risk in the audit. What is to be considered as the fraud risk? The revenue recognition, okay. And now what I have, what has happened so far? I have done my risk assessment. By doing my risk assessment, I have assessed the fraud risk. I have done my risk assessment. By doing my risk assessment, I have assessed the fraud risk. And now, what does it say further? I have to respond. I assess the risk. Now, what I need to do? I need to respond. And now, what is my risk? Okay, I think maybe in the company there is a fraud. So, now I need to respond. 100% what I will have to do? I'll have to be more alert. 
Hundred percent. What I will have to do? I will have to send all the experienced staff for the audit. Can I send all the first year articles for the audit? No. Why? Because there is a fraud risk. Hundred percent. Third, what I will do? I will do more evaluation of the accounting principles and policies. And hundred percent, what I will do? I will check for the risk of the management override of the controls, right? To control implication, the auditor's ability to assess the control risk below the maximum may be reduced, right? So now I need to respond to the fraud risk. How do you respond to the fraud risk? By being more alert yes by doing more critical assessment of the audit evidence you remember that questioning mind being alert to condition magnifying glass and a critical assessment of the audit evidence next what you do you send your more experienced staff for doing the audit third what does it say you do more evaluation of the accounting principles and policies and last one it says you check more properly the controls of the entity right the controls of the entity right what was one presumed fraud risk which we saw right now revenue. revenue recognition what is the second presumed fraud risk in every audit management override of the controls right the management override of the controls what does it say although the risk of moc will change from entity to entity okay some companies the risk of moc is very Hi. Some companies, some entities, the risk of MOC is less. But what does it say? The risk is nevertheless present in all entities. So again, is it a presumed fraud risk? Yes. In some companies, risk that management might override the control very high. Some companies, risk that management may override the control very less. But will that risk be there in every audit? Yes, that risk will be there in every audit. Okay, right. So now what we know, whenever we identify a risk, now next what we need to do that to that risk, we need to respond. And how do you respond to the risk of MOC by doing the journal entries testing, right? By testing the journal entries. You remember our substantive procedures, ka last one, examining material journal entries. Right, examining material journal entries. So what you will do? You will check what are the journal entries. Then they make inquiries of the individuals who are passing those journal entries. Then you will also check the journal entries at the end of the period and also throughout the period. Because generally journal entries are passed when I have to close the books of account for a particular year. But you see, some journal entry has been passed in between the years. So maybe there is an interim dividend being paid. Right, so it may be passed throughout the period, and you also need to check the amount of that journal entry. Generally, the amount of a journal entry is an estimate, and whenever I have to audit an estimate, I need to check whether there is any management bias, right? Provision for bad and doubtful debt, right? Is it an estimate? Right, is it an estimate? Generally, how much of your debtors don't pay? Ten percent. So, how much provision you should make? Ten percent. But what did I say? You want a loan from the bank that is why what you are saying only one person provision is required or you want a subsidy from the government then what do you say 20 percent of our debtors don't pay what realistic it is 10 percent but what you are doing you are putting your bias there is lack of neutrality by the management are you understanding that right so what does it say the risk of moc present in every audit as an auditor you need to do the journal checking of the journal entries then you need to make inquiries of the individuals who are processing those journal entries you need to check the journal entries at the end of the period as well as the journal entries throughout the period and you also need to check the estimates and whether there is any bias in the estimates right please do the markings in the class you will not be able to recollect or remember anything if you don't have any supporting or any record in your books super important somewhere something please mark if i have written one two three four five six i have circled some words over there please Okay, right. So what have we discussed? If I look at it from the end of the chapter, has fraud reporting discussed? 
राइट देन इज एस ए टू फोर्टी का लिटिल बिट डिस्कस रिस्क असेसमेंट प्रोसीजर्स आइडेंटिफाई द रिस्क रिस्पॉन्ड एंड देन टॉकिंग अबाउट द एम ओ सी द मैनेजमेंट ओवर राइड ऑफ द कंट्रोल देन वी ऑल्सो टॉक्ट अबाउट द right the responsibilities of the auditor and the responsibilities of the management then we've already discussed the definition of the fraud what is fraud it is an intentional act by one or more individuals among management tcwg employees or the third parties involving the use of the cheating why cheating to obtain an unjust or an illegal advantage okay right and then after that what does it say right what are the two have you studied something called as types of errors maybe it's okay errors of commission errors of omission compensating errors procedural errors duplication and all of that studied na ha theek hai anyways we have got nothing to do with that over here but now what we are studying over here is the types of the fraud types of the fraud and now you say ke this company is a fraud right this company there is a fraud now how could a company do a fraud what are the types what are the varieties of fraud which could be done by a company or an entity right so basically sa 240 so this is also a part of my discussion of 240 only has divided the types of fraud into two what are the two fraudulent financial reporting or the mis appropriation of the assets there are only two ways regarding how a fraud could have been done by an organization one either there is the fraudulent financial reporting or second there is a misappropriation of the assets right fraudulent financial reporting what does it say fraudulent financial reporting array do you remember when i discussed with you the definition of internal control r e s c r reliability of financial reporting s safeguarding of the assets did i tell you these are opposites if there are controls in a company it will lead to reliability of financial reporting and the safeguarding of the assets if there are no controls in the company then it will lead to fraudulent financial reporting or the misappropriation of the assets are you understanding that right fraudulent financial reporting or the misappropriation of the assets okay right today did i talk to you about teaming and leading fraud teaming and leading fraud cash received from one customer shown as if not received from him and cash received from the subsequent customer shown as if received from the previous customer right what was that that was a misappropriation of the asset the cash of the company was it misappropriated in that case yes right now that cadbury warehouse fellow was he misappropriating the inventory of the company yes so what was that that was a misappropriation of the asset are you understanding that okay right so what are the two ways in which fraud can be committed fraudulent financial reporting or it could be the misappropriation of the asset okay right fraudulent financial reporting f f r fraudulent financial reporting can also be called as the fraudulent accounting right it could also be called as the fraudulent accounting now how can a company do a fraud in accounting how can a company do a fraud in the accounting okay bogus entry charging assets to pnl okay 
under recording of sales fake sales invoices being recorded over recording of sales okay so which fraud am i talking about fraud in the accounting so one what you are doing how much traveling expenses you incurred 20000 how much ka bill you should submit to the company 20000 what you did you added one zero you added one zero so what are you doing you are doing a manipulation a falsification or an alteration of an accounting record right so you can do a fraud in the accounting record you understand then you can do a fraud in the accounting entry sitting sitting what to do right of the assets of the company bogus journal entries being passed in the books of account then what did you do you did a fraud in the accounting period for which for which period does the sale relate to 26 27 when did you record it in your books of account 25 26 you've done a fraud you've not recorded it in the correct accounting period okay how much percent of your debtors don't pay 10% how much provision you made 30% what is that accounting estimates there is a fraud right accounting estimates there is a fraud okay are you understanding that right accounting records there is a fraud accounting entries there is a fraud accounting period there is a fraud accounting estimates there is a fraud okay like there is an accounting standard for investments there is an accounting standard as 13 which is there for the investments what does it say investments of a company should be classified as long term investments and the current investments yes long term and the current investments okay what does it say long term investment should be valued at cost and only any permanent diminution in the value of investment should be considered and current investment should be valued at cost or net realizable value whichever is lower this is what is told in the accounting standard now what is your investment it is a current investment see what is the cost of your investment 100 what is the nrv 2 rupees at what price you should value it 2 rupees but what you are saying no no it is not my current investment it is my long term investment and you show it at 100 what are you doing misapplication of the accounting policies and principles right misapplication of the accounting policies and principles simple non compliance with accounting standards what are you doing in this case misapplication of accounting policies means you are doing the non compliance with the accounting standards are you understanding that okay right now there are two ways in which fraud in accounting can be done yes there are two ways in which the fraud in accounting can be done one what you do instead of 100 rupees you record 10 rupees is it a fraud yes is it a fraud yes it is a miss representation you how much sales you did 100 rupees how much sales you recorded 10 rupees is it a fraud yes second what you did you didn't pass any sales entry only you didn't pass the accounting entry only so now what you have done you have done the omission right the intentional omission so one you don't disclose yes one what you say you have 20 related parties you disclosed only 10 or second what you say we have no related parties both of it is a fraud okay what you are showing is not correct or what you should have shown you are not showing are you understanding that over there what is that it is the fraudulent financial reporting are you understanding that that means there is a fraud in the accounting are you understanding that that means there is a fraud in the accounting of the company and second one what does it say you are misappropriating the assets of the company can you tell me what all are the different assets of the company cash right cash of the company you receive the money from the debtor <laughs> you receive the money from the debtor what accounting entry you should pass <laughs> cash account debit to debtors account what you do you misappropriate you do the teaming and leading fraud right you do the teaming and the leading fraud then what other asset of the company you have right you have the machinery you have the building of the company 
you have the intangible as the tangible intangible assets of the company say you have the building of the company director of the company wants to take a loan why does director of the company want to take a loan for daughter's wedding director of the company wants to take a personal loan why he wants to take the loan for daughter's wedding right now he goes to the bank bank give me a loan bank says bring security what is this company building mortgage right so what you are doing for you are giving a yes what do you say you are giving the company security as a collateral for a personal loan being taken by the directors of the company then inventory is it an asset of the company inventory stock of the company is it an asset of the company what you are doing you are stealing the inventory of the company right you are stealing the inventory of the company cash of the company what is the another fraud you can do with the cash of the company yes you can make the payment to the payment to the dummy workers right payment of the salary to the dummy workers then what you can do you can make the payment to the fictitious vendors fake vendors you can make payments when you did not receive any goods or services did you receive no good services not receive but making the payment right so payments being made for goods and services not received uh, are you understanding that right discount given to customer right or recovery of bad debts yes now discount what does it say C money received from customer what accounting entry should be passed cash account debit to debtors account 10000 what is one you can do pass no accounting entry at all second what you do you have little mercy in you so because you have little mercy in you what you do cash account debit 8000 discount given to customer account 2000 to debtors account 10000 where is the discount going pocket account debtor has paid full 10000 what accounting entry you should pass cash account debit 10000 to debtors account 10000 what you are doing showing the fictitious debtor debtor has paid the full amount how much he has paid 10000 but what you say debtor very bad fellow why very bad fellow bad debts written off account debit 10000 to debtors account 10000 where is the 10000 going pocket account did the debtor pay yes but you are showing good debt as bad debt you are showing inappropriate unauthorized discounts being given to the customers what are you doing you are misappropriating the assets of the company right the directors of the company is taking a personal loan company's property is being given as a collateral right teaming and leading fraud inventory of the company is being stolen or you are stealing the intellectual data of the company right the tech what you say technological data of the company and you are colluding with a competitor and selling it to the competitor for a price right you are selling the technological data of the company to a competitor right you are colluding all the secrets of your company you are selling it to the competitor right so again competitor what do you say what do you say the in technological data is that not an intangible asset of your company and again what is happening you are misappropriating the assets of the company are you understanding that okay right so this is first a generic discussion regarding the fraudulent financial reporting and the misappropriation of the assets okay but the most important question okay why does a person or why is a fraud done why would any person commit a fraud right what does it say we talk about the fraud triangle right what is the fraud triangle over there it is either the person has an incentive or he has a pressure or he could be having an opportunity to commit a fraud can he be having any one of them can he be having any two of them yes can he be having all three he has an incentive also pressure also opportunity yes so this is why do management employees commit the fraud right why is a fraud being committed where had we seen this fraud triangle in our definition of the 
fraud risk factors what did we say what are fraud risk factors events conditions or situations which either provide an incentive or which put a pressure or which provide an opportunity to commit a fraud okay right so what does it say whether it is ffr or whether there is moa what is ffr fraudulent financial reporting or there is the moa that is the misappropriation of the asset it has to involve either a incentive or a pressure or an opportunity and some rationalization of the act right it says the person who does the fraud rationalizes his act of committing a fraud like then you ask okay, why did you do a fraud on the company send you say you send the bogus bills to the company and those bogus bills you got them processed and you got the payment so they ask you okay why why would you do so right so one they say there is a per, yes, some member of our family who is terminally ill and then for the treatment of that person we require 10 lakh rupees and that is why out of helplessness the fraud could be committed are you understanding that second reason you know so what can be said could due to some personal crisis that person might commit a fraud like you know any fraud like robbery or so is being done right second you ask this person okay, why did you do a fraud you are from such a good family financially well to do you know god's grace everything is good in your life then why did you do fraud he says everybody does <laughs> trend you understand no why are you doing the fraud you ask him so what does it say everybody is doing a fraud how wonderfully they write now amazing these guys are however even an otherwise honest individual matlab he is absolutely honest every day applying 5 ml of oil <laughs> honest individual you know image of an honest individual 5 ml oil applying very sincere shirt ka even the top button you know which has been put absolutely looking and you know, wearing soda glasses you understand 5 ml oil short button right up to your you understand that and then wearing soda glasses four feet fellow you understand you say even if a fly sits on your nose you don't remove it fly sits on your nose even that you are scared to take it away and here you are doing a fraud it says why even otherwise honest individuals can commit the fraud in an environment that imposes sufficient pressure on them today yes bank what did we see those two employees of the bradi one bradi branch of the bank right what did they do letter of undertaking right they issued and then the foreign branches they got the loans from there right so what does it say yes incentive pressure opportunity to commit a fraud yes what does it say incentive or pressure to commit fraudulent financial reporting may exist when management is under the pressure like ramalinga raju or vg siddharth from sources outside or inside the entity why to achieve an unexpected or perhaps an unrealistic earning targets of the or the financial outcome so what is there there is an incentive or there is a pressure i p o here we are talking about the i and the p then after that a perceived opportunity to commit a fraud right a perceived opportunity may exist when an individual believes that internal controls can be overridden why because the individual is in a position of trust and has knowledge of the specific deficiencies in the internal control right so there is an incentive there is a pressure or there is an opportunity to commit a fraud and what did we say many a times individuals they justify okay why they are authentic authentic in doing the fraud 
you understand why they say ki i have don't think i have done anything wrong by doing a fraud no you have done a fraud that itself is wrong but what they say i don't think i have done anything wrong by doing a fraud so what are they doing they are rationalizing the committing of the fraudulent act some individuals possess an some individuals possess an attitude a character or a set of ethical values that allow them knowingly and intentionally to commit a dishonest act but at least once in the day if they don't speak a lie they feel something is incomplete today you understand what does it say intentionally to commit they are what do you say Com the brain ka programming neurons in the brain wiring of the brain only corrupt and a wiring only there is a problem and a conditioning of the mind only there is a problem you understand what does it say individuals may be able to rationalize committing a fraudulent act what you are asking are a employee two crore salary you get why did you do a fraud what he says i expected a promotion i thought they will give me increase my salary to 3 crore they did not increase but i wanted salary of 3 crore fill in the blank 1 crore fraud he says not even 1 rupee extra only 1 crore had they given me salary 300 lakh i would have not done that also but they didn't give no so then that much fraud i did right so they are rationalizing they are dishonest act are you understanding that yes so ipo what is ipo incentive pressure and the opportunity to commit a fraud are you understanding that okay right right so what does it say within a human being which is seen to the world 5 ml oil you understand four feet soda glasses what does it say within that person there is a cunning person sitting in the mind you understand that within that person there is a corrupt mandal or yes person sitting in the mind over there okay right yes and what are the two right what are the two types of intentional misstatement that they are talking about over here is the f f r and the m o a yes what is f f r fraudulent financial reporting and the misappropriation of the asset and now we come to the discussion regarding the types of the fraud yes everyone types of the fraud what are the types of the fraud again fraudulent financial reporting right or the miss apro creation of the assets right general discussion did i have with you regarding how a fraud in financial reporting can be done it's a fraud in accounting how you can do fraud in accounting accounting records you do a fraud accounting entry you do a fraud accounting period you do a fraud accounting estimates you do a fraud accounting policies and principles you do a fraud or one you record it incorrectly or second you don't record it at all right all what is this what is all of this this is the fraudulent financial reporting okay right so now in our material over here what does it say what is fraudulent financial reporting it is an intentional misstatement or an yes it means an intentional misstatement or an omission of amounts or disclosures obviously why to cheat the financial statement users and how can you do a fraud in accounting how can you do a fraud in accounting one what does it say you can do the manipulation of the accounting records right manipulation 
is manipulation falsification or the alteration of the accounting records right so traveling expense voucher 20000 what you did added one zero so what is that that's your manipulation falsification or the alteration of the accounting record second what you are doing you are doing a Misery presentation. Okay, how much is the sales of the company? 100 crore. How much did you record? 10 crore, right? So, misery presentation. Or second, how much is the sales of the company? 100 crore. How much you recorded? Zero. Intentional omission. Right? So, in misery presentation or the intentional omission. Third one, what is it? Intentional misapplication of the accounting principles. Intentional misapplication of the accounting principles what did i say what is the accounting principle cost or nrv whichever is lower if cost is 100 nrv is 2 at what price i should show it 2 rupees at what price i have shown it 100 rupees whatever done i have done an intentional misapplication of the accounting principle okay right say the company has incurred brand ambassador charges Right? Brand ambassador, 5 crore they have paid to a brand ambassador, say any cricketer or sports, yes, celebrity. And now what does it say? The, you, this brand ambassador has a contract with the company of 3 years. Right? So should the brand ambassador charges 5 crore rupees paid and he is the brand ambassador of your company for next 3 years, should it be capitalized? And every year, one third, one third of the amount should be charged to the profit and loss account? No. The entire amount as it is, you have to 5 crore. Right now, you have to dump it to the profit and loss account. You cannot show it as any deferred revenue or any capitalized, nothing. Because the ultimate benefit is uncertain. You understand? No, you cannot measure it. Okay, what benefit you will get out of the brand ambassador charges, right? So what do you say? Should you capitalize the brand ambassador expenses? No, but what company has done? They have capitalized. So what company has done is the intentional misapplication of the accounting principles. Okay, right? So how can you do a fraudulent financial reporting? manipulation misrepresentation or the misapplication and then you have a fourth m over there which is the management override of the controls right which is the management override of the controls okay right so if i come to the question bank right if i come to the question bank wherein we talk about the right one the definition of fraud right then after that the ipo you know ipo incentive pressure opportunity or rationalizing the act of committing a fraud right then after that write a short note on ffr what is ffr fraudulent financial reporting manipulation misrepresentation and the misapplication and then what is the th next time over there management override of the controls right is it asked as a retail question in your exams so in the fraudulent financial reporting you have a sub part of the discussion over there what is the sub part of the discussion over there right so fraudulent financial reporting what do we say manipulation of the accounting records then the yes misrepresentation or the intentional omission and then the misapplication of the accounting policies or principles right so that is the m m and the m and then we have a fourth m also but that fourth m is for the right it is for the management override of the controls and what would management do by overriding the control okay these are the controls in the organization is the management following them no they are overriding them right are they following the controls no they are overriding the controls and what is the management doing by overriding the controls in the organization one they are recording the fictitious journal entries right particularly when to the close to the end of an accounting period that is near 31st March. Why near 31st March? To manipulate the operating results or to achieve other objectives. 
then what management is doing by overriding the control they are adjusting the assumptions what assumption they adjusted what assumption they adjusted ke how many of the debtors of the company don't pay 10% so what is their assumption ke 10% debtors don't pay but all of a sudden they change their assumption ke 20 40% of the debtors don't pay or only 2% of the debtors don't pay and changing the judgments used to estimate the account balances okay then what are the next three words over there omitting advancing or dealing recognition so omitting means what not recording at all advancing means what next year showing into the current year dealing means what current year showing into the next year recognition in the financial statements of the events and transactions that have occurred during the reporting period so estimates then what you have the recognition what are you doing with the recognition one not recognizing at all second you are recognizing in advance or third you are dealing the recognition of the amount okay then what does it say if company has a contingent liability should it be disclosed in the notes to account if company is having a litigation going on should it be disclosed in the notes to account yes but the company has not disclosed the facts and then what the company is doing it is entering into the complex transactions and it is also entering into the unusual transactions complex and unusual transactions where we had studied sr okay when does an rmm become a significant risk right when does an right when does an rmm become a significant risk sr right when the company is engaging in the complex transactions when the company is entering into the unusual transactions okay right right so what does it say management override of the controls what would a company do by overriding the controls one they will pass the fictitious journal entries then they will make the inappropriate assumptions for the estimates right for the estimates they will do the inappropriate assumptions then what they will do recognition either they will omit or they will advance or they will delay then facts they will conceal or not disclose and then what they will do they will enter into the complex transactions and then they might also enter into the unusual transactions yes everyone are you understanding it so far fraudulent financial reporting what did we say f f r is equal to m m m manipulation misrepresentation and the misapplication right manipulation of the accounting records misrepresentation or the intentional omission and next one is the misapplication of the accounting principles and then what is the next term management override of controls and then how management could override the controls right by passing bogus journal entry by miscalculating the estimates based on the inappropriate assumptions recognitions either by omitting them advancing them or delaying them in fact by not disclosing or by concealing them and by entering into the complex transactions or the unusual transactions okay right yes so normal people right who don't do a fraud how they write the spelling of giraffe g i r a f r a f f e people who don't do a fraud people who are normal right they will write it this way but people who are complex who are unusual how they will write the name of giraffe giraffe right they will write the giraffe right why they are writing giraffe because 
journal entry estimates recognition and the facts is this a fraud yes writing giraffe giraffe nahi c u nahi it is only j e r f giraffe c n u is what writing giraffe in this way is complex and unusual you know giraffe what is the color of their tongue yellow <laughs> what is the, you don't know what is the color of the tongue of giraffe green red yellow pink google what does it say you don't know general knowledge this will not come in exam but i am telling pink color have you seen black color kali zuban okay where you saw half pink it is black only <laughs> anyways we don't have to do anything about the tongue of giraffe but how to write giraffe giraffe right giraffe how is this style of writing giraffe it is complex and unusual and what is this giraffe doing it is doing management override of controls okay right oh my god full jungle we have to bring right first we have to go to buy cauliflower then we have to meet the giraffe okay right anyways right right next question what are we discussing everyone types of fraud which is the a what is the a fraudulent financial reporting and what is the b b is the misappropriation of the assets right that is the b but we are yet to reach to the b right now we are still talking about the a in the a what we have talked about is the fraudulent financial reporting in that a uh, retail question regarding the moc now we come to, come to the one more small question over there which is regarding the why do management and employees commit a fraud generally who all can generally who all can do a fraud management tcwg employees and also the third parties but here now specifically what they are talking about is why do management and why do the employees commit a fraud right so what we are talking about over here why do management why do employees commit a fraud right why do management so a small question under the heading of the fraudulent financial reporting ke why does the management why does the employee do a fraud right so one they have a financial obligation that fellow has a bank loan to pay right so that is why there is a pressure to commit a fraud there is the unrealistic goal of the there is the unrealistic goal of the management so now again to fulfill the unrealistic goal of the management there is a pressure to commit a fraud then what does it say dissatisfied employee or lack of motivation amongst the employees right so this you are rationalizing your act of committing a fraud why you wanted a salary of 3 crore you got only of 2 crore you are a dissatisfied employee dissatisfied employee and that is why you are doing the fraud then what does it say name game right what is the name game that they are talking about over here management using the power of authority right the ceo of the company is telling that these are all my personal travel bills and the secretary which is working for the 
CEO, what he is telling that all my personal bills, please charge them to the company. Right, so management, what does it say? They have the power of the authorities and they are asking the employees to do something illegal. So CEO himself is not processing those personal bills. What he is telling, he is telling the secretary to process those personal bills. And then also there is an opportunity to commit a fraud, right? Then what does it say? So is it similar to IP only? But then that is what is the style of ICAI. They keep it a repetition over there, right? So pressure, why there is a pressure due to unrealistic goals and financial obligation. Then there is the dissatisfied employee or the lack of motivation amongst the employees or management is misusing their power or there is an opportunity to commit a fraud, right? So what is question number one we had over here? sources of the FFR. Then we had a retail question regarding the management override of control. Then third question which we have is the why do the management employees commit a fraud? And then what does it say? Right? Company doing a fraudulent financial reporting. If a company does the fraudulent financial reporting, that means what are they doing? they are doing the manipulation of their accounts. If a company is doing the fraudulent financial reporting, means what they are doing? They are manipulating their accounts. What should the accounts of a company show? They should show a true and fair view. They should show the true state of affairs. Now the manipulation of accounts, they are presenting a false state of affairs of the company, right? They are presenting the false state of affairs. And we have two super favorite questions of the ICAI over here. One regarding why would a company manipulate the accounts? And second, how would a company manipulate the accounts? Super favorite questions of the ICAI, right? Why would a company manipulate the accounts? And how would a company manipulate the accounts? Okay, right? Yes, so what is the type of fraud which we are discussing on the left hand side? Fraudulent financial reporting, right? Have you guys heard term called a term called as window dressing? Right, can I so say, can I so say, okay, fraudulent financial reporting and window dressing are one and the same thing? Can I so can I so say that fraudulent financial reporting and window dressing are one and the same thing? Yes. Can I say that they are one and the same? No. Why? Because window fraudulent financial reporting, I can show a better or I can show a worst financial position than what actually is. If I want a loan from the bank, I show better. If I want a subsidy from the government, I show worst. But window dressing is always showing a better financial position than what actually is. So window dressing is a type of fraudulent financial reporting. Right? Window dressing is one type. You understand? Because, miss, yes, what does it say? Fraudulent financial reporting is what? It could be better or it could be showing worst financial position than what actually is. But what is window dressing? It is always showing a better than what actually is. Are you understanding that? So does fraudulent financial reporting and window dressing mean one and the same thing? No. Right? Window dressing is a type of the fraudulent financial reporting. Okay, right. So what is manipulation of accounts? It is a fraudulent financial reporting. That means you could show better or you could show worst. Okay, why would a company manipulate its accounts? Yes, why would a company manipulate the accounts? One, in order to, in order to, Right? The actual profits of the company are 100 crore. They are showing only 2 crore. Why are they manipulating the accounts? One, to avoid the incidence of the taxes. Then, 
right in order to yes what does it say to get the subsidy okay then what does it say one there is insufficient profit of the company there is insufficient profit of the company but still the company wants to declare the dividend and second what does it say there is the sufficient profit of the company so now can they declare a dividend sufficient profit is there now can they declare dividend yes but now they want to withhold the declaration of dividend right now they want to withhold the declaration of the dividend are you understanding that one to avoid the incidence of the taxes second there is insufficient profit so will you be able to pay dividend no but they still want to pay the dividend so obviously they will manipulate and second they have lots of profits can they show declare dividend yes but they want to withhold the declaration of the dividend then what they want to do they want to maintain the share price of the company right to maintain the share price of the company right they want to manipulate right they want to maintain the share price of the company are you getting that and then also what they want to do to receive the higher managerial remuneration they want to receive the higher managerial remuneration right so what is this this is why would a company manipulate the accounts right super favorite question of the icai okay why would a company manipulate accounts and also how would a company manipulate the accounts right so why would a company manipulate their accounts one to avoid the incidence of the taxes second for declaring dividend when there is insufficient profit third for withholding declaration of dividend when there is sufficient profit adequate profit then for yes maintaining the share price of the company for manipulating the value of the shares and then for receiving the higher managerial remuneration right so this is why a company would manipulate the accounts and then next you know why would a company manipulate the accounts and second question is what how would the company manipulate the accounts how can you manipulate so either you can show better or you can show worst how you can manipulate the accounts of the company either by either by inflating or by right inflating or by suppressing right inflating and suppressing what inflating or suppressing what the purchases and the expenses inflating or suppressing the sales and other items of the income inflating or deflating the value of the closing stock right so what does it say either inflating or deflating what the purchases or the expenses right inflating or deflating the purchases or the expenses then inflating or deflating deflating the sales or the other items of the income then inflating or deflating what the value of the closing stock then what does it say failing to adjust what your prepaid and your outstanding liabilities right outstanding liabilities or the prepaid expenses the outstanding liabilities or the prepaid expenses and last one is what charging capital to revenue or charging revenue to capital account right so capital to revenue or revenue to capital account right so these are the five ways as to how a company could manipulate the accounts right how would a company manipulate its accounts right how would it manipulate its accounts either by inflating or suppressing the purchases then by inflating or suppressing the sales or other items of income then inflating or deflating the value of the stock then not adjusting the outstanding liabilities or the prepaid expenses and then charging revenue to capital or capitalizing the revenue expenditure right so charging items of the capital to the revenue or by capitalizing the revenue expenses right so what are we discussing over here fraud right so one what we discussed is the meaning of fraud then we say fraud is intentional then there is a ipo incentive pressure opportunity to commit a fraud and then what are the types of fraud 
fraudulent financial reporting and the misappropriation of the asset right so if you look at the question bank what does it say why do management employees commit a fraud then there is a question regarding the manipulation of the accounts right and again a question regarding the manipulation how this type of fraud is committed so how it is committed means you need to write down the second set and why would a company manipulate the accounts that is the first one what is it explain why and how so then they've asked you both okay why would a company manipulate the accounts and also how would a company manipulate the accounts right and then now we need to look into the right hand side what is the right hand side over there right this was the ffr now we need to look into the moa that is the misappropriation of the assets right so let's take a break okay <laughs>